So headaches are extremely common and according to the World Health Organization, nearly everyone has a headache occasionally. But one in 20 people suffer from headaches on a daily basis and that can be quite debilitating. Um, headaches come in many different sizes, many different forms. Uh, today, what I would like to do with you is discuss the six most common forms of headaches with you and natural remedies for those headaches. Uh, I'm not saying don't take you mean the pills that normally have been prescribed by, by doctors for migraines or stuff that will help you with, uh, with, with tension headaches. Uh, but I mean something that you can use in addition to uh, those medications. Or maybe the natural remedies will help you altogether and you don't need to take the other ones. But I mean, that's, I'll leave that up, uh, up to you. Um, so the type of headaches that we're going to discuss today are your sinus headaches, migraines, Headache caused by digestive problems, and the last three I'm going to wrap up all in one because they're quite similar. Stress headaches, tension headaches, and anxiety headaches. So starting off with the, with the sinus headache. A sinus headache is a headache caused by inflammation of your sinuses. Your sinuses are cavities in your skull, and the cavities are located your forehead, behind your nose, and underneath your, your eyes and they become inflamed. And the typical pain pattern is obviously forehead here, behind the nose and underneath your eyes. And it causes a, a deep, dull ache, a chronic ache around the eyes, the nose and the, uh, and the head. Um, telltale signs of a sinus headache, it's tender to touch, so tapping it brings the pain on and it's aggravated by movement. So two movements especially, bending your head forwards aggravates the pain and laying on your back will aggravate the pain. So those are the two, two telltale signs. We often have some associated symptoms with it as well. Uh, so your cough, a cold, or you feel a bit nasally. Those are all signs that is associated with sinus headaches. Um, and we've got some remedies, thankfully, for it as well. You can use some decongestants uh, that will help to free up those sinuses. You can syringe it, syringe your nose and the sinuses using salt water. You can buy some pre-made solutions at, at any supermarket uh, or you can make it yourself, use some boiled water so you make sure all the bacteria are dead in it, add some salt in it, let it cool off, and then syringe your uh, syringe the sinuses using, using salt water. Um, or something which might help as well is to cut up an onion and leave it next to your bed, and the onion helps to relieve the pressure in your nose, and that helps to uh, create a gateway for the sinuses to, uh, to empty themselves. So that's something you can do for sinus headaches. The second headache we're going to discuss with you are migraines. Now they're extremely common. It's estimated that one in seven people uh, suffer from mi migraines from, from time to time. Location of the migraines is often one side of your skull, so either there or there. It could be behind the eyes, but often it's one side behind the skull. It's extremely painful. It's often associated with, uh, with photophobia, so you can't, you have a sensitivity to light, sensitivity to sound. Some people have an aura where the visual field really constricts and it almost looks like they can only, they, 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 they look through a, a keyhole. I mean, that's the type of visual field that they, uh, that they have. Um, sometimes accompanied, accompanied by nausea or vomiting. It's, it's, it's very, very extreme. It could take several days to, take it, to, to get over it. Um, we know some triggers. Uh, for this, we know there's obviously some food triggers. So you talk about alcohol, you talk about cheese, you talk about some chocolate, unfortunately, sometimes. Um, stress can cause it, especially we know that the neck can cause a, a problem and, and creating stress, shoulders up, that can actually trigger a, a migraine as well. Uh, so uh, if you want to combat stress, or uh, if, if you are in a stressful period, uh, make sure you do some either meditation, take a hot bath, do some breathing exercises, control the stress, and you might be able to control your, your migraine. Uh, there is recently a study being published about the link between digestive uh, conditions and migraine. So for example, IBS or celiac disease, uh, there's a link between them two and, uh, and migraine. So again, control your food and you could control your, uh, your migraine. Um, hormones can play a big role in this as well, especially imbalance of hormones. Uh, when you're estrogen dominant, uh, I mean, that can cause a, a, a migraine. Um, uh, when you when your migraine, your onset of the migraine is around your menstrual cycle, uh, that's obviously a telltale sign as well. Uh, when you have a headache uh, and headache and migraine during your pregnancy or, or postpartum after your pregnancy, again, telltale sign. Or if your migraine began or it stopped even taking birth control pills, I mean, and, and another thing. 
Um, now, a, a natural thing what you can do is eat foods that can, that contain estrogen. And examples of these foods are uh, tofu, um, flax seeds, sesame seeds, uh, soybeans, hummus, and and garlic. So those are the six foods you can eat. The top six foods that contain the highest level of estrogen in in foods in foods out there. Um, then go back to the causes. Another cause of migraines can be idiopathic, which is unfortunate, but means we just don't know what's actually causing the migraine. Uh, and the last thing is the neck. As I mentioned before, tension in your neck can really trigger a migraine. So releasing the tension, something something we can help you with as chiropractors uh, by adjusting your neck, loosening things off, using medical dry needling, getting rid of the tension in the neck that uh, in the muscles that can uh, that uh, connect your uh, your skull to your uh, to your spine. Release some tension in uh, in there, which will help uh, some soft tissue work on top. Uh, we can do some breathing exercises with you. Uh, you should, often what we see, especially in stressful times, people tend to breathe shallowly on the chest, here, and not through the tummy, there. So that's something we can uh, we can help you with. Uh, so those things will help with, with migraines. Uh, two, two other foods you can take, generally natural remedy for, for migraines, uh, vitamin B12, i.e. Uh, riboflavin, uh, 400 milligrams daily for at least a month, preferably for three months to see the full result of taking uh, vitamin uh, B12. That's something you can try. Uh, and ginger, about a thousand milligrams a day. And ginger has the additional benefit that it can help with nausea and vomiting as well. So those are na another two natural remedies you can try uh, when you're struggling and suffering from, uh, from migraines. The third uh, type of headache I'd like to discuss with you uh, are headaches caused by digestive problems. So you can see here the pattern digestive problems is around the forehead and around uh, the eyes. Um, now there are some often some associated symptoms with it as well. So you've got some st some stomach problems, some some kidney or gallbladder and intestinal ailments uh, that, that comes with it. Uh, and, and generally people are sensitive to food. The best thing to do for this is keep a food diary. So if you have the headache uh, on, on one day, go back to your food diary, see if you can discover a pattern. What if you had the day before, uh, and maybe you can see a pattern and avoid them kind of foods, and therefore avoid um, the, uh, the headaches caused by, by digestive problems. The last three headaches, I'll wrap it up, I'll, I'll, I'll do, do them all together, are tension headaches, stress headaches, and anxiety headaches. 50% of women tend to suffer from these, 33% of men tend to suffer from these. Uh, they often come on at the end of the day. They are located, often arise from the neck, located at the back of the skull, so here, the side, and possibly the forehead, the forehead as well. They tend not to drop below the eyes, and they often are associated with a very um, tight feeling around the skull, like you're wearing a really tight, tight cap. Um, they're aggravated by stress and, and, and poor posture. I imagine you're sitting in front of a computer, for example, sitting like this all the long, shoulders come up, and the head being tilted backwards, tension on the neck, so that can aggravate a, a stress headache. They're often relieved by paracetamol and, and over-the-counter um, anti-inflammatories, so that's something you can, uh, you can try. Um, you can do some muscle stretches, which will help. A simple one, an effective one, is you're grabbing a wrist, pull, so I'm grabbing my right wrist, pulling my shoulder down, and tilting now my left ear to my left shoulder, which st stretches the upper trapezius muscle, which runs from your, in this case, from my right ear to my right shoulder. You hold this stretch for about 10 seconds, you repeat 10 times, and you do three, 10 sets, and you obviously do the same on the other side. Yeah. So that's something you can do which, uh, which will help. Some breathing exercises, when you're stressed, same thing as I said with the migraines, people breathe often too shallowly, so breathe a bit lower down in your, uh, in your tummy. Um, again, the medical dry needling will help, something we can help you with, uh, uh, to release some, some tension in the muscles that connect your skull to your, um, to your neck. Uh, we can do some adjustments, which will help loosen things off for you. Um, and I mean, posture improvement is also a big thing, uh, again. Yeah, we, we can help you or, you or you can do it yourself, find some videos where you really open up and you strengthen the back of your, uh, strengthen the back of your, um, uh, of your, of your neck and your, and your shoulders and make sure you're nice and upright and shoulders are nice and down. Have a look at your work, your work place as well. Make sure your desk is set up properly uh, so you're not driving into your screen but you're nice and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and upright. 
Um, now, as I said, we, we can, chiropractic can help with a few things. It can help prevent a few things as well, the migraines and the, um, uh, and the tension, stress and anxiety headaches. That's something we can, we can, uh, we can help prevent happening. Um, there are uh, three anti-inflammatory foods I'd like to share with you for all these type of headaches. So they reduce general inflammation in the body. They are uh, turmeric. Uh, so take a thousand to two and a half thousand milligrams daily. Uh, the second one you can try is EPA fish oil, EPA fish oil. Take a thousand to two thousand milligrams of that daily. And the last one you can try is called magnesium. Uh, and magnesium is a muscle relaxant and it's also an anti-inflammatory. So that will also uh, possibly give you some relief from your, from your headaches. I hope you had some value. You found some value in this video for headaches and uh, wish you all the best of luck. Bye for now. Bye bye.